So we've had a viewer type in about uh, the Tuscaritum, the mystery orb that's no longer mysterious, saying that it is one of the most mysterious deep ocean creatures where every dot is a single cell and they create a stunning marble-sized glass geodesic sphere. And they don't know why or how. So still very mysterious. That's different. Whatever is coming into frame on the left. Roger. Go ahead, Daryl. It's good. Let's see if I can uh, touch here and get a closer shot. Is some type of from Noid. If I had to venture a guess, I'd say Canadella. So one of the things we're trying to understand in the deep sea is these. Um, the relationship with these associates. Oh. So you'll notice a lot of these have one, um, one and only one brittle star, and that's not always the case. But it's also pretty rare to find any of these without a brittle star of some type. Um, but we don't know if the brittle star spends their whole life out there, if they move around and jump between corals, how they even find the corals, um, are all questions we really don't know. I've got enough for an ID, Dan, if you want to okay. move yeah. on. Well, I'm sorry about the dust storm there. Oh, no worries. That was a really great so explanation. I was trying to uh, you. spin around and put the put the ramen downhill so I don't... Well, if we want to take the time to jump off, we can, too, if it's going to be... No, if no. driving sideways and backwards is too annoying. No, I'm fine with that. Okay. I just uh, got a little greedy on the spin around there. When it comes slower, it won't dust it up. Looks like some kind of chrysogot jid there in the center. Can't really tell what it is. Zoom a bit there if you want. Sure. Ooh. Looks like a giant snowflake. Actually, I think this is two different corals. Is that one also Eridogorgia? Yeah, I think one? it's an Eridogorgia, a little Eridogorgia on the left and from kind of bamboo. Oh, oh where'd go? Uh, Squared what is the Scott Lobster. Scott Lobster. Yep. If you can get a tighter zoom on the right one, yeah. that would be great. Anybody see any nodes? Go ahead and push right in there. Can... Yep, there's a couple nodes. It's a bamboo. I sit a day. All right, I got what I need. Thank you. Roger. Okay, I can go wide there. Thanks. So is there a set pattern or set form that we're taking on this survey? In terms of like sampling design, you mean? Or? Yes, yes. Not really. Um, okay. I didn't know if we were like making a transect or a big circle. We are making a transect. Um, so across the board, we're going more or less in a, a linear fashion from point A to point B but we're just kind of hunting and pecking and running around at tether length um, to see. So when we when we analyze the data, we will kind of consider this, a, a, I guess what would be called a belt transect of however many meters we go from where we stop the engineering trials to where we recover, you know, plus or minus 10 or 15 meters on either side to kind of account for the length of the tether and us looking around, this is at least how I generally do the analysis. But it is a very loose transect. Okay. That makes total sense. Yeah. Thank you. So for your research, were you 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 were using videos like this from Nautilus or yep. Okeanos? Yep. So what we'll do is we'll we'll go back and and a group of us will sit down and literally watch the video from end to end and stop and zoom on and, you know, freeze frame on every single organism we see and sit there with guides and key it out what we're seeing. And the ones we can't key out, we'll take 
uh, screenshots and send to experts and get them to identify us and, and identify them and then put a big compilation together of uh, all the organisms, where they're located along the transect, um, what kind of what kind of sediment they're attached to or hard ground and whatnot, and then take the physical parameters. So at the same time, we are, you know, we've got a couple of CTDs and other environmental sensors giving us oxygen, temperature, and things like that. This is a type of sea lily, uh, a, a stalked crinoid that we're looking at right now. I forget the scientific name for this type. Um, but we've seen two or three uh, kind of in the background across the course of this dive. These are, these stalked crinoids broadly are one of the truly ancient um, taxa. They were honestly thought extinct for the last hundred million years or so until we started exploring the deep sea and lo and behold we started finding things that came straight out of the fossil record that you know hadn't been seen before dinosaur time in the fossil record. Uh, we started finding them alive in the deep sea. Um, and they're really, really one of the major deep sea attacks that we'll see. Tilt up just a bit first. No. Go this way for a while. Some uh, more rocks. Corley, can you tell us a little bit about the, the blackness coat in the rocks here that we're looking at? Yeah, so this black coating is ferromanganese crust. Um, it is the type of rock that I study, but uh, so these rocks precipitate onto other substrate in the ocean. So they come in two forms that we talk about generally. One is ferromanganese crust, which is what we're seeing here, which means it precipitates. When, when we say precipitate, these rocks are formed literally out of the ocean, um, but they can either precipitate onto hard <laughs> substrate. So on this case, in this case, a seamount, oh, but oh they can gosh. also precipitate around a sediment piece. Um, and then yeah. those would be called nodules. Uh, those are commonly found in the abyssal areas of the ocean. Do you? Uh, but these rocks are composed mainly of manganese oxide and iron oxyhydroxide ions. And these ions scavenge oppositely charge metal ions and complexes from the water. Um, and they lock them into precipitate. So they have high abundances of a lot of different things that we don't commonly find on land. And oh, there's there a shrimp. There, the, there it goes. So for viewers at home, uh, if you see something that really excites you or something that you want to learn more about, uh, you can follow us at a hashtag Nautilus Live or on our YouTube channel. We're posting dive uh, highlights as well as you can scroll backwards in the YouTube feed to see something that maybe you missed it, maybe you want to rewatch it, or maybe there's a great explanation that you would like to rehear. So again, hashtag Nautilus Live or on our YouTube channel, uh, Nautilus Live. So one of the things that I've kind of been interested with note looking at the way these deep sea corals and thinking about their feeding strategies and what controls where they live is you'll see that this coral is actually, the current is moving towards the ROV right now. So it's being pushed downstream. And if we get a close look here, we'll see which way the polyps are actually facing. And I'm expecting they're actually going to be facing downstream as well. Um, which is a, seems a little counterintuitive yeah. sometimes when you would expect your mouths and your wall of things to catch would actually be facing into the current. But we see this a fair amount in deep sea organisms where they actually put their feeding appendages, their arms, downstream. I think what's happening is it's creating some kind of turbulent eddy downstream and it's easier for it to pluck the slower speed mm. particles out of the water after it's kind of entered the eddy or turbulence behind the organism itself. Um, but on face value, it feels a little counterintuitive. But yeah. we're, I'm seeing multiple families that exhibit a similar kind of structure in the way that they are um, oriented. That's so interesting. So I have a question for you from one of our online viewers. 
how come the sea lily that we just passed by has so much vibrant color compared to everything else at this depth? That is one of those questions that we don't have a, a solid answer for. Um, there's a lot of color down here um, across the board. We, we've kind of, frankly, been seeing the pale and whites um, this dive, um, but there are some others that are vivid red and vivid purple. Um, there's a lot of different colors um, out here. And if actually you don't, you can't really see it well on this one, but if we get another good look at a, a Metallogorgia or a Chrysogorgia, um, their skeletons are actually bright gold. Um, and uh, and some of the plexorids come in a whole range of different colors, and we don't really know. Uh, some of them do bioluminescent, bioluminesce. Some of them fluoresce uh, mm -hmm. under certain stimulants of light, whether that's intentional or unintentional, we don't really know. Um, but in a world that's devoid of life, why you have so much color uh, is really an interesting question. Um, and I don't think we have a really good answer for it. So how do we under or how do we know if a if a creature is biofluorescent or bioluminescent? Uh, some people come down with low light cameras and poke them and see what happens, <laughs> or you come down with a ultraviolet light and shine it on them and see if they fluoresce. Um, and is that on? So on your previous cruises, have you been able to? study that kind of no, uh, no? I, I have seen a few pictures in journal articles and whatnot but i've never never done that live this is another type of primnoid here of some type oh man, again with so its cool. it's lone it's one brittle Ast star it's lone astroschemus brittle star here the brittle star doesn't hurt it or anything. It's just no. There. We we think there it is either a commensal relationship or a mutualistic <laughs> relationship. So meaning either one party benefits and it doesn't hurt the other, uh, or they both benefit. Um, there's some work that's been done in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, act after the Deepwater Horizon spill, that um, the corals that had brittle stars actually fared better than the corals without brittle stars. And there is some indication that the brittle stars may clean and somewhat protect or de-sediment the corals. Uh, and then the brittle stars benefit from getting up off the substrate into the flow uh, to catch more food. That's so fascinating. Hello, Tammy. Glad to hear from you. Here's another Metallogorgia. Are you in a position, pilot, to try and maybe take a snip of this Metallogorgia? We'll probably see another one, too, so we don't have to get this one now if it's not an ideal situation. But we've seen enough. I'd like to get a sample to make sure we are getting the ID right. All right, well, let's just keep moving on, then. So Brian, one thing that you said earlier, which I kind of want to bring up, is that after we're done here, we're off the boat, maybe it's been a couple of weeks, a couple of months, you and a team of experts will sit down and thoroughly analyze all this footage and key out everything. That's the hope, fund independent, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and so once you have those IDs and everything, do you write uh, scientific literature? Do you compile? Uh, like some kind of guide, what do you then do with that information? So the first, I guess, the question would be, what's the research question? What are we actually trying to understand? Um, so depth specialist. So actually, the deeper you get, the more the echinoderms become dominant. 
They are really good at adapting to life in high pressure. Oh. And you can see his tube feet kind yep. of waving around. And they have cute little white booties. <laughs> if you, look, if you get a good look at it, you can okay, kind of see they like a oh, painted good. white tips there. Yeah. yeah. It's not very clear on that one. There's a, a, a similar species that has really prominent little white booties that when they run across the seafloor, they're super cute. Yep, I see. Surprised we haven't seen any sea cucumbers yet. Yeah, they're my favorite, or one of my favorites. I have so many favorites. With, with this much sediment, I would have expected to see a couple by now. So we're 1,200 meters down, and looking at this seafloor, it looks like something that I would find within two feet of water on any beach. Yeah, but if you look at the Miofauna we were talking about earlier, they'll be wildly Completely different. different. I loved it when they were using the slurp the very first time, and you could see the little little worm getting pulled out. Well, yes, please. Amber in the science chat has is suggesting a type of protist for our unidentified floaty object. So I've had two different suggestions so far. Oh, here's one that I don't think it's this one, but it's uh. So this is what one of the viewers sit in for the orb. for the mysterious orb. Yep. Looks Sorry. like we might have a winner. The power of telepresence. <laughs> Just keep an eye on him if he's... Yep, here's a couple. You know sure couple pictures. That. I am going to butcher the pronunciation on this thing. Tuscardiadum is the genus, probably. And it's a type yep. of protus. That's what... I'm getting the same thing. I have definitely never encountered this one before with an ROV. Here's another Umbalula, a sea pen hanging out here in the current. Uh, Love that name. In there if you want. Yeah, I really enjoy saying it. And it actually is a type of, well, it's been reclassified, um, but it used to be a radial radialarin, just a really big one. The mysterious orb? Yeah, the okay. mysterious orb. Somebody is. earlier was saying that the that Schmidt found a really large radiolarian. Yep. Uh, so then that makes sense. Yep, looks like that's what it is. All right. Oh, I'm so sad that we solved the mystery of our <laughs> mysterious orb. <laughs> I really liked our living Pokemon theory, or at least my living Pokemon theory. So for those at home, because I know I'm getting several questions, uh, the mysterious orb, we believe, is a tus Tuscaridum, T-U-S-C-A-R-I-D-I-U-M, as best we can figure. Yeah, and thank you, Amber, for the ID. We appreciate it. And thank you for the online viewers who've been typing in what they, what they think it is. And back into the rocks.
there's a sponge just up and right of the lasers that we have not seen yet. If we could take a quick look at that. Oh, that's right here. Yep. Go ahead. Daryl. Oh, wow. That is beautiful. And there's a shrimp. The Are back. you guys some? Yep, yeah. and a little shrimp. Are we working the stills camera at all? Or? This might be a Ferrea sponge. Oh my gosh, that is incredibly beautiful. This is another one of the glass sponges. Most of the sponges we'll see on this expedition are glass or hexactinellids. Okay, I'm gonna, gonna run. That's gonna good, go. thank you. I'm gonna get pulled. You can uh, come down five meters, please. That glass sponge looks like some glass that an artist out of the island of Murano in Italy would be blowing. Mm -hmm. Just pure art. We got well, another metallic gorgia there that we're not going to get a look at because we got to keep moving. <laughs> but yeah, you can we do a quick look. No, it's that. fine. Are we, we've right, seen enough. Sure. We got a good sense of them. Yeah. I'll do sixty. <laughs> Sorry, making you dizzy here. Well, I'm uh, video, can you zoom out on uh, that Atlanta force? <coughs> we're uh, we're going down the hill here, so I'm using it to <coughs> since I'm going sideways to. See what's up in front of us before I run into it. Corley, we haven't we haven't actually covered that much ground since the last three rocks we picked up. So do you don't have any desire for a <laughs> rock this close, do you? No, I'm I'm okay. Okay. It did look back there, there is like some nodules covered in cement, um, but I'm not as interested in those as, you know, other other people. If we see a, a, a good no section of nodules, I imagine Kara or Amy would be interested in, in looking at them though, don't you think? Bob would be right. interested for sure. Yeah. I think Adam might be interested too. I think he likes the idea of little tiny rocks. Can you pan up the camera just a touch so we can see what that one is? Thanks. Uh, let's go up and have it's a look. not actually a metallogorgia. That's an aridogorgia. I think. A bit, of course, yeah. How yep. do you know the difference between the two? Uh, the spiral, um, the spiral stalk gives a big, ha a big thing, and the aridogorgias have straight. Um, kind of off-axis stems, mm -hmm. whereas the metallogorgias have these very angular kind of structures. But they both have a spiral stalk? No, generally the metallogorgia is a straight stalk okay. and then fans out in kind of an umbrella form. It no, doesn't have this three-dimensional kind of structure to it okay. that the uh, aridogorgias do. Some kind of gelatinous something stuck in there as well, maybe the remnant of some type of egg case or something. Um, or it might just be flotsam. Still, but I can't. <laughs> Getting a little tug there. I got what I need. Roger. Didn't get the beauty shot.
probably a sea pen sitting there out in the sand. So there's kind of two ways. There's building big databases, which I'm all for and are super important. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's getting kind of an academic peer-reviewed publication um, out. And that's the currency of academic scientists is how many of these publications and how good are they uh, turning them out. Um, and so there's kind of, there's twofold. So here, looking at this area that's never been explored and as a target for such um, such a very real need for good management, uh, data for management decisions in a very real time, we could do something like just a characterization report going and comparing the seamounts uh, around here um, and the differences and how this group of seamounts compares to, say, the, the actual flanks of Kingman and Palm Iowa are south mm -hmm. of here. Um, and then something I'm interested in doing is, is compiling hundreds of these ROV dives across larger areas. That's new. Can we look at the bottom right? Um, and so kind of comparing large aggregations of many of these dives together um, and looking at trends across larger scales with much, much larger data sets. This is some type of Chrysogorgid, but I don't know what kind. It is not one of the normal ones we see. And is that a brittle star or a second shrimp? Looks like two shrimps to me. Uh, or maybe a shrimp and a scrot lobster. Okay. All right. I think I got enough. Thank you. Um, so what ends up happening, though, is annotating this video is super, super time intensive. Uh, generally, it takes somewhere between three and five hours of people time for every one hour of bottom time. So if Good we come Lord. back with probably several hundred hours of video from this expedition alone, we're looking at several thousand hours of human effort to analyze all this video. And you said um, that you sit together like um, I'm thinking y'all guys are all in like a conference room no, or is it via Zoom? No, not at all. No, it's it's Slack basically. When somebody watches it, someone posts pictures, frame grabs they have trouble with in a Slack channel or on a Google Drive and then we all like kind of take votes on what we think about it is or pass it off to another expert. Um, and so it takes years. Um, Man. Yeah, the, Oh. The project we did that I was on last time I was at sea was just at two years ago over mm -hmm. in the Howland and Baker unit of the Pacific Rhode Islands Marine National Monument. And uh, we still haven't put the paper out for publication yet. Most of the analysis is done. We're kind of just wordsmithing some stuff and it should be out not that long, but it's two years later. Uh, and we've and that was only analyzing four dives out of the 22 we did. Um, so this is a type of... Um, Lobster, I believe. Little squat Little lobster? One. No, I think this is actually the a true right. lobster. Okay. Um, I forget. I'm trying to draw a blank on what this is actually called. I know what it is, but I can't remember. Um, but they're, they're cool little creatures. Um, so there is a substantial amount of time, effort, energy, not only to identifying this, or to identifying the different creatures that we see down here, but then to go back, publish it, or put it in, or compile it in a big yep. database. Exactly. Um, and so one of the things I'm really excited about is um, some of the possibilities for using uh, machine vision and, and um, some artificial intelligence work to be able to speed up that annotation process in several different ways. So there's several projects now going on um, to uh, help train neural networks to be able to identify these organisms to some level to speed up that process. Um, there's and that's a, already in the works. It is. There's a, a, a funded project between the Ocean Discovery League and Monterey Bay Research Institution uh, called Ocean Vision AI that's starting up. Uh, it's actually well in started um, that is making a huge effort to try and figure out how to do this better um, by collecting large reference data sets to train 
the uh, the neural networks on and then um, having setups to use um, volunteers and uh, actually creating some games to get um, people enthusiasts to help um, train the algorithms and everything to recognize what we're looking at. Uh, and so I'm really, really excited about what's going to come out of that project and being able to speed up the analysis pipeline for this type of information. Man, that was a phenomenal explanation. Thank you so much. And going back to that true lobster, one of the viewers typed in, and I'm going to butcher the name, Home, Home Ryan Asper. Homer Ryan. Home with the R Y O N Asper. I don't know if that's tr correct or not, but that's what a viewer said. So cool. I'll Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for uh, helping us with the ID. And sorry for the butchered pronunciation. Uh, this looks like it might be, you've got two corals here. Um, this one we're zooming on now, I'm guessing bamboo. Can't be sure quite yet. This is not looking very healthy. Yeah, it's a bamboo, but it's not a very healthy bamboo, except it might have a little coral reverse jellyfish on it, maybe. I think we're good. Thanks, Dan. Um, and then over here on the left, that looks like it's probably a Norella. Oh, well, maybe. I take that back. I think it's another bamboo. What's the difference? Oh, no, this is actually kind of interesting. So it's this is this is what looks like I think it's a, a bamboo that has had some dieback, and so it's got zoanthids overgrowing it. So there's actually two types of uh, loosely defined as corals here. Um, one is these kind of yellowisher ones are actually colonizing the, um, the skeleton of the, um, what I still not 100% sure it's a bamboo, but I think it's a what I'm calling a bamboo um, that has died back, and I don't know what that floaty thing is there on the bottom that looks like it might be a jellyfish that's gotten caught. And then the kind of tan. Yeah. Oh, I see it. I am. How cool is that? Yeah, I think that's some type of midwater jellyfish that's gotten snagged and has been beaten up. I'm still oh, not sure what, what this... What a neat cool guy. I'm still not sure what the underlying coral is here. And there's also, uh, that's a, a feather star living on it as well. So this poor coral is just getting taken advantage of left and right. Yeah, it's not it's not having a good time of it. <laughs> but we're having a good time looking at him. Are you in a position, Dan, where you can take a clipping on this one? I'm not 100% sure what this is, so if we can just take a, a tip off one of these arms.
people would. So Corley, I have a question from you from a viewer. Mm -hmm. So this viewer is from Australia and says that when they have black sand on the beach, what is it likely from, composed of? Is it ferromanganese crusts that have been broken down? No, that's actually from a uh, volcanic rock. Yeah, so all of the different colored sand beaches you get is mm -hmm. all from igneous rocks. And uh, ferromanganese crust would be considered a sedimentary rock. Awesome, thank you so much. Yeah. But there's a bunch of really cool different color beaches. I've been to a black sand beach before and had a good time. Mm -hmm. But there's also red sand beaches and my favorite are green sand beaches. Olivine. Which are made from olivine, yeah. Which is one of my favorite minerals, other than pyrite. Yep. You can if, if the crinoidal if the crinoidal hang on too that'll be fine or you can get the one you the higher one either one. Ooh, closed. Again, watching a master at work. Oh, hang on, little guy, little friend. I don't have a strong preference for where it goes. Wherever you want to put it that's open is fine with me. Chris, where it's open. Uh, we got oh, yeah. pretty much any of the bio boxes except for E. So out of all the rocks we've seen on this expedition, the rock in the box is my favorite. So, so much life down here at 1,200 meters. Oh, hello. Uh, yes, sorry, zero, zero, 006. All right. Video changing. Video switching out with Dave. Can you hear me?
<laughs> Dave's in video. Ooh. What are what is that little guy, little friend floating or swimming? This looks like it's probably a rat tail. Is it like a juvenile rat tail? Because don't they get a lot larger? They can, but... Oh, you're right, you're right. Oh, look at them go. Oh, so that was our first fish for a while. Ooh, and some more sponges. Always listening, Dad. Wow. Look at that one. Again, it looks like an artist just crafted that. <laughs> oh my gosh, so intricate. And that's all one okay. single organism of sponge. It looked like it had so many different osculums, okay. which I guess yep. is not unheard of. It's still one, one organism. Thank you. Very kind, thanks, pilot. <laughs> Roger, stand by. Stand in by. So, for those online, we're going through a bit of a shift change right now. We're bringing on uh, some fresh folks while some others are getting a little bit of a break. Thanks, Dan.
um, Robert. Stand by, science, doing some testing. Do you still hear the really annoying clicking? I have heard it occasionally, Samantha, but not full time. Can you hear me? Sweet. No. I think I'm listening to SPL. Uh, oh, yeah, up. Yeah. Test one, two. Yep, we can hear you now. Oh, okay. So you hear that? Danger, sorry, invalid login. Whenever you're ready, we will start continuing towards waypoint two, uh, moving down about two one zero. <laughs> This way. We're going this line. We're just following this line still down. So we're going to follow that line down. Hey, front row, do, do we have uh, power secured on the laser? Do we have system? power secured on the laser, Robert? Yes. You ready? Yeah, let's see if science is ready. Science, are you ready to keep moving? Let's move. Okay. Bridge, Nev. Good evening, three zero meters bearing two one zero, please.
correct. Thank you. Go ahead, Bridge. Three zero meters. After that video, can we move in tight on whatever uh, little sh straight bit is uh, there in the center of the screen? We're starting that ship move. Copy that. We got to get uh, Bob on board with that. Uh huh. Yep. Few C pens, generally sparse bio. You know. Wait, why am I, why is that upper right screen not moving? Which one? The... I see it. Um, oh yeah, you're right. Let me it, fix it that. It is not moving. Good call, thank you. It means the telestrator's frozen up, I'll have to work on that. Okay. I didn't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it got overused in the last watch and uh, worn out. Is there a limited number of telestrator pokes? <laughs> <laughs> um, we may have uh, we may have discovered that. Have to wait get, to get more credits to play. <laughs> <laughs> I lined up four quarters on this screen, so. I <laughs> Um, so you can put in that we're waiting on the ship move right now. Yeah, we're, we're moving. We're waiting on the Atalanta swing. You're not hearing me. Uh, you can hear me. Bob, science expressed an interest in looking at that C-pen that's on the you upper did. left. Adam, would you give the uh, telestrator a poke and see if it's draw drawing lines? Only one, Adam. Hear that? Right there. Okay. <laughs> that counts as three separate uses of that's the telestrator. A, that's actually that's right. one. Everyone <laughs> knows that. That's an emoji. That's how we speak in, now. <laughs> that's an emoticon. Emoticon. <laughs> You're dating yourself. So <laughs> really? Emoticon is more modern than emoji? Negative, that's no. <laughs> no. Uh, why I dated. Uh. You're dating yourself in the reverse way.
So should we do some introductions on this watch? Nah. We're not doing that anymore? <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> yes. Moving. I guess I should do another step then, because this took a while. Right, or another step. Great to have. Let's do another three zero meters, same bearing. Thank you. Thank you, video. So those of you just joining, this is the 8 to 12 watch of EV Nautilus. We're exploring an unnamed flat top seamount here within the US EEZ around uh, Kingman Reef and Palmyra Atoll. We're pretty much still on the top of this flat top seamount. Before too long, we'll come to the edge where it'll get a lot steeper, but what you're seeing on your screen is some light tan colored uh, pelagic sediment, probably made up of organic matter and uh, the shells of little critters living higher in the water column. And then the black stuff is uh, the rocks of the seamount, but heavily encrusted with some iron and manganese oxyhydroxide. So this is a type of crust that precipitates really slowly out of the seawater. Um, and in this case, probably for around 80 million years. Underneath that, uh, couldn't really say for sure what rock is underneath that. It could be the uh, volcanic rocks that make up the, the seamount. It could be carbonate rocks that formed on top of the seamount when it was up near sea level. I'll introduce myself. I'm Adam Sewell. I'm a, a marine geologist, a professor at University of Rhode Island. And uh, I don't know, it's my third or fourth time sailing on Nautilus and really excited to be out here exploring parts unknown. Hi everyone, I'm Juliana Filion. Um, I work at the Museum of Comparative Zoology at Harvard. Uh, this is my first expedition ever. Um, I'm a biologist here on the Nautilus, and I'm very happy to be here. Hello all, greetings and talofa. Uh, my name is Annie Halleck. I'm an SCF on the Nautilus. This is my first year sailing. Um, I'm from Pongo Pongo, American Samoa, and I'm excited to I'm excited to experience even all of this. And that's it. There's nobody else here. <laughs> nope, nobody else. Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> Dave, Dave, <laughs> I have to come down to the front row. I'm Dave Robertson, uh, lead video engineer, uh, and uh, sitting in the video seat tonight, making everything looking as uh, good as I can. And, uh, it's and looking great. This whole thing going. TJ. Unmute. Unmute. <laughs> there there we you go. go. Yeah, uh, hello everybody. My name's TJ. I come from the southwest of Ireland uh, here as Atalanta pilot and uh, delighted to be on board and working with a great team. Yeah, I'm Robert Waters. I'm a uh, Hurt pilot. 
I'm OET's uh, facilities manager and ROV engineer. And Samantha Wishnack, navigator, uh, also OET's operations coordinator. It's my eighth season on Nautilus, and I just try to do some math on number of expeditions, but <laughs> I couldn't count that high. I got you beat. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll do that for the next watch. <laughs> Hey, Thank Robert, you. as we're passing by things, can we zoom briefly on some of the stuff that we see? Yeah, you going to point something out or? The the sing, single coral in the middle of the uh, screen. Is that an Aritagorgia? It, I think it's Aritagorgia magnus borealis, yeah. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> That's OK. <laughs> it's totally fine. <laughs> it was nice knowing you. <laughs> huh. Nothing have brakes? <laughs> yeah, I don't have brakes. Why don't I have brakes? <laughs> That's unusual. Why don't I have brakes? Oh, there's a stock coronoid maybe? And then, uh, ooh, a that twisty looks one? Like a bamboo coral, bamboo yeah. Bamboo coral. Unbranching bamboo coral. Is that stickopathies? Could be stickopathies. The, um, the black coral, move. or the you know, the un, the unbranching thing. No you think control. it might be a black coral? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, totally move, possible. So we'll have the have totally possible. I have no control. It is. Bridge, huh? I like when we're just going Hang like on. this because I, I got it. I'm gonna reset the GUI. <laughs> Gone rogue. Hold position, please. Okay, so that's a. Let's say standby stance. That was exciting. Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Let's not do that again. <laughs> Welcome to the age 12. Yeah, that's a little disconcerting. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I feel pretty confident that that was um, stochopathies. Yeah. I'm sure we're not going to find it now. Ooh, no. There's What's a, this? That looks like a like a holothurian or a anemone. anemone. It's oh an yeah, anemone. there it is. Ooh. We're not looking at anemones, right? <laughs> no. no, we've got some, zooms, got some zooms <laughs> on that already. <laughs> Science, are we looking to stop at any time, or are we just trying to get to waypoint two? I honestly, how far away is waypoint two? It is. About 60 meters. Okay, well, let's go to waypoint two. Roger. Robert, when you're ready, let me know. I'm ready. You're ready. Bridge, Nev. Let's do five zero meters bearing 210. Hmm. All right. I promise I'll stop at the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Five zero meters. Okay. Yeah, we're steadily going down the slope here. Hey, welcome to those who just tuned in. Um, our expected dive duration is about 14 hours. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, for those of you who are just joining us, ROV Hercules is making its way to waypoint two. I do have a question here. Um, will we be naming the unnamed seamount and how will we be naming it? That's a great question. I don't think we'll be naming it. Mm -hmm. There's a okay. pretty extensive process to name a new feature on the C4. Um, and it involves uh, working with... There's a fish. What is that? Yeah, it's very it interesting. Looks like it Video could be what Brian saw earlier, the lobster. Although, that's a... a it's okay. so small, it is looks... It a, okay. It's an anglerfish, maybe. Chonicops? No. Oh, baby. Maybe. Baby Some, just a shrimp? 
Oh, no, is it just a shrimp? It looks right. weird, though. No, I think it's a fish. No, <laughs> not a fish. Not a fish. <laughs> not a fish. Not a fish. Lobster. It is. It is arthropod of some kind. It looks like, okay. but I can't tell. Someone, someone mm -hmm. sent in an ID earlier. It's definitely a um, shrimp. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. Oh. Ooh, where's Brian? Some kind of arthropod. Yeah. Oh boy. Gotta go. Small Bye. things. Uh, yeah, so the, uh, naming it, you got to work th with... Uh, Can you give me some leash? Gebco, Gebco I think, but... Uh, oh, there he goes. What's that little brown thing? On the bottom left that just went out? Yeah. I think that was another anemone. Oh, there's another one of those there's things. There's another one? Oh. <laughs> maybe it's Can we get a one. picture of one of these? Yep, we are getting pictures throughout. <laughs> But if you're oh, the the anemone, we zoomed on on. No, not the anemone. The oh, this thing, yeah, this yeah. Swimming thing. Can you zoom in. You had a viewer um, type in their ID. Um, no. Homerion oh. asper lobster. Nice. Oh. Homerion as asper lobster. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> oh, thank you for the ID. Cool. All right. Good. Thanks, yep. Will. Moving on. It's a metallic orchid. Looking at this guy. Yeah, I think we got an ID on that. So good. Well, I would zoom in it's hard to see in. if it's that plane, but yeah. it does from um, from here. Oh no, mm, it looks I more like it's, it's not. Mm. That's the um uh, Aridogorgia flavicens. A, a squat lobster. A squat lobster. But just not so an actual lobster. There. That's a crap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I know why they name things like this. So what kind of coral we think that is? I think it's a Ritogorgia flavicens. Flavicens. Um, flavicens. I concur. <laughs> <laughs> nice framing. Yeah, that's a great shot. Oh yeah, it is a great shot. <laughs> Sorry, I'm stealing this. Hey. Yep. Moving on. Mm -hmm. I was wrong. Chrysogorgia flavicens. I didn't want to say anything, but. <laughs> 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 From our viewer, Polly Kylid Lobster, aka Deep Sea Blind Lobster. Ooh. And it's a true lobster. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> mm, yeah. Um, yeah, and you can add that, that maybe polyketed lobster mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. uh. I want to, let's look, let's Google that. Are we interested or no? Uh, yeah. I would gander bamboo. Mm -hmm. But yes. if we can get closer, we can look for the, the bands. Yeah, I'd say it's an Isid. Looks bamboo-y. Yeah. We could quick zoom, maybe we'll see in, see the uh, yeah. bands. Yep, bamboo. And what are the bands that you're seeing here? S the little black um, oh, in the, the skeleton. Oh, the between the bamboo Yeah, part. those are the sort of the diagnostic bamboo-esque. That's bamboo a feature of the bamboo coral. Like a protein type of thing between the yeah. skeleton? Yeah. What's this behind it? Do you Is think that the a another, a brittle, another brittle Another star? chrysogorgia of some uh, kind. Yep, and a brittle, and star. A brittle star. Do you think it's the same vertigorgia that... I can't tell if that's the flav... I don't think that doesn't look like flavicens. It doesn't seem okay. to have that tree And it doesn't have the tree toppy yeah. metallogorgia thing quite either. So some kind of chrysogorgia with a with a urealid in it. 
And for nobody who asked, those are still the same rocks that we <laughs> saw before. Yeah, yeah. They're not the very same. <laughs> They're very slightly different rocks. <laughs> Look at that one too. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Hey, Dave, zoom in. Oh, is that an urchin there on the? Right there the is left? an urchin oh, on there. the left. Mm -hmm. uh, There's pen an pencil urchin. urchin of some kind. What do you think? Is this primoid or chrysogorgia? It's not Chrysogorgia. I'm trying to figure out if it's bamboo or primnoid. Okay. I can't tell from this got? far away. Yeah, zoom would be great. Thanks. I don't think it's I bamboo. I don't really see the bands, but oh, it also yeah. like doesn't quite yeah, convince no. me that it's primnoid. <laughs> oh, Brian says primnoid from He downstairs. says primnoid. Yeah. Okay. okay, so primnoid. Oh. I can't get to my chat. Hey, how are you moving? All right. Yep, that's fine. So that ship move is just about complete, but I think we've got a little extra swing here. So we can catch up to the ship and then make a call on what we want to do after we... Is uh, that a crinoid over there? ...reach this waypoint. Whereabouts? Do you see sort of in the... Oh, yeah. ...in between? Yep, that's a, crin a stock crinoid. Yeah. Sea pen. A lot of these scattered sea pens are, uh, yeah, when we're walking around in the sediment. So science, we are just about to waypoint two. Uh, we're gonna start to hit a slope downwards here. Okay. okay yeah, so I think we might that, uh, that we're near ballast up a little bit as they say. Look two. for a rock. <laughs> look for a what? A, a rock. rock. Roger. Do you want to look for a rock in this sandy bottom area? Do you want to look? Are uh, looking uh, for basalt? Well, we're, we we won't be able to tell. I don't think, but. Whenever you come to a stop, let's take a look around there and see what might be. I mean, nothing here looks like you could pick it up, but. Uh, okay. What size rock are we looking for? Uh, Whatever you can get. How, well, how much do you need? <laughs> <laughs> you, you might want to consider what rocks are already in the boxes. You ain't got a lot of room. Oh, really? I had heard there were there were just a few that had been uh, um, picked up. There are just a few, and they're mostly in the front left, but Dan is right that one of those big boxes is occupied by the um, ramen test calibration plate, and the other big one has a huge rock in it, so oh. only smaller rock room. Right. Dan, where were you calling in from? I need to adjust that lower. Data lab. Oh. Thank you. Uh, okay, so we're. You guys heard him too. I thought he was in my head. <laughs> <laughs> we're rock shopping. I heard him. Rock, rock shopping. So Adam, there's still these four compartments free, just the smaller ones mm -hmm. in the starboard bio box. And there's just the just the, the test. bamboo coral in here. Oh, it's here is the calibration plate taking up all of F. It fills that whole thing. Zoom in um, there might be some room in it, but it's kind of awkward in That's angles, good. and in that way, it takes up a lot. Okay. Oh, 
Uh, we have a question in from the viewer. Um, what is the water temperature currently? That's a great question. It's around three point, let's pull it up, 3.9 degrees that earlier. Boat attached down there. Where do we at? Yeah, it looks like it might break off if you... Maybe. It's 3.84 degrees Celsius right now. Three which point it's eight usually four. around about four degrees Celsius down here, yeah. Thank you. Oh, it's in Dan mode. Dang it. <laughs> Hope it doesn't break. Leo, when you get a grab, does it get the the Atalanta view as well? Um, if sometimes, yes. Okay. <laughs> we can optionally take just that, or every time that Paula submits something like all these free forms, there's a grab of both of them. Okay, it's just a nice view for a rock sample to get a little wider a context, view. Context, yeah. sure. Yeah. That's not going to come loose. Yeah, oh. I, I, I'm not sure if it's in your reach, but up above you a little bit, there looks like there might be some looser bits up to the right. In the sand? Not in the sand, just to the right of that. You know, my eye's not super tuned in, but uh, here, let me just oh. think of Pause button is dangerous. That button, that area there. Point again. Right there. <coughs> we uh, zoom in, Dave. That's, is that attached? I don't know. It's loose. All right, we'll take it. We only have small bins to put it in. Starboard side, eh? Can we get uh, pictures of the rock first, oh. though? A little spinny spin. <laughs> that's good. good, thanks, yep. And you will probably want to do it here first, since that's about to be stowed.
Any of the small starboard is fine. Can we uh, switch over to uh, sampling mode? Uh, Aloha. Um, our expected dive duration is 14 hours. So ROV Hercules just finished grabbing a rock sample. I can fire it from here, Bob, if you want. Yeah. We do have a question in from the viewer. I'm asking, um, how are you and how are you all and what, out of curiosity, will be will the rocks be gathered for? What are the samples for? Right, that's a good question. So, um, okay, TJ, can you push the uh, sample box out? So, there's a couple uh, uses for these rocks. One is Double that we'll open. cut them open and see what's underneath all the black crust right. that's on top. And it, it might very well be the that's volcanic good. rocks that make up mm -hmm. the seamount, in which Any case... Any particular box here? All of them are open, so... Yeah, anyone. anyone is fine. So we will look at the minerals in the rock and the chemistry of the rock to understand the source of the magma that produced this this volcano mm -hmm. and then we'll also look at the black crust on the outside that's iron manganese oxyhydroxide box. and yep. we're Close interested box. in not just uh you know the the main components of that the iron and manganese but the and, the uh, trace components of that which are really interesting metals that get scavenged from the seawater Annie, could you say again the name of the town you're from in American Samoa? Um, Tafuno. Tafuno. Yeah. And which island is that on? Uh, Tutuila. Okay. Yeah. Is, is the one rock okay, or you want more? No, that's fine. Um, we will have a little decision to make here because the slope's going to get steeper and steeper and uh, right. we could just head off into the blue uh, for a bit and turn around, come back and face the slope. Uh, we've got <coughs> two and a half hours. Um, I don't think you want to be di driving downhill though. If it's if it's yellow like that or orange, it's like made a big change and it hasn't updated in a while. So. One point two meg, and then it went back to twelve when we're running the craft. Oh, but. 20k or 20 meg yeah that's nothing it's, it's still like a hard ground like yeah yeah so we have two grounds that's borderline ground okay <coughs> I'm ready so Alrighty. Samantha, what what's the uh, next waypoint there? Is that kind of yeah? Waypoint three is about two hundred and sixty meters uh, south of us. It's going to be a steeper slope down. Yeah. So Bob, do you wanna do you wanna try and drive that, or do you wanna? How much steeper is it? Uh, let's see what these contours are. Stand by. I can kind of go sideways on it, maybe. Crab down? Yeah, like we've been doing. OK. 
Okay. Are we happy with that, science? I'm happy with that, yeah. And and if it, you know, gets too steep, then we'll just kind of pull off the bottom for a little right. bit. Okay. We'll, we'll take just it. stay in the view there and, yeah. Okay. You want to do 30 meter steps okay or s shorter? Nope. I'm cool with that. 30's fine, yeah. Everyone's cool. With that. Bridge, Nav. Uh, three zero meters bearing two zero zero. So for folks at home, when you hear that we're moving the ship uh, 30 meters, that's that's pretty crazy. But the way we do that is with dynamic positioning. So the boat's not just pushed from the thrusters in the back, but it has thrusters on the front as well that can cause it to, that work in kind of synchronously to move it very precisely and allow it to hold position. Good explanation. Well, thank you. <laughs> I did have a question about the spectrometer. Um, how significant will the use of spectrometer be in deep ocean exploration? Oh. Well, that uh, depends who you ask. <laughs> but, you know, it, it kind of represents um, a direction that technology is taking us in the ocean, which is right. to uh, not have to collect samples as much and bring them up onto the ship and back to the lab, but to collect data in situ or in place. Right. And uh, so... You know, this is a, a baby step in that direction, but there's, uh, you know, I think a lot of interest because one, you can collect more data, but two, you can have a, a lighter touch on the, the seafloor mm -hmm. and not disrupt the, the habitat as much. So right. uh, it's, a, it's a pretty exciting thing to be a part of. There are also broader Thank implications you. for space exploration as well. Oh, okay. um, a lot of this newer technology we're testing in the deep sea, and there is hope that one day it could be used um, in space. Awesome. That ship moves underway. We're at 0 0.3 meters, or 0 0.3 knots. Let me know if you want to drop down on speed. Telephone and welcome for everyone just tuning in. Ooh, there's a stick of pathies. Stick of pathies. Oh. I do a lot of this where I say, ooh, there's a, and then I wait for <laughs> someone to fill in. <laughs> <laughs> just a sign up to Thank our you. viewers. Telephone means hi in Samoan language. It's a bamboo. Mm. I'm going to zoom there, Dave. You think so? Okay. Oh, yep, that is bamboo. How could you possibly see that <laughs> when we were zoomed out? <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah, it's that certainly feeling. does look like bamboo. So, Lou, what do you? What do they call? an animal like this that is made up of lots of little animals? Is that a colonial animal? Oh, yeah. That's a good question. All right. Up. 
Thank you for the question. I have a viewer asking, what's our depth, please? Paula. Our depth is Where? roughly oh. 1,200 meters. Oh, our <laughs> Paula's turn to... You tell me, what's our depth? <laughs> You're muted, though. I can't hear you. Is it on the web page? Huh? Isn't the depth all our data on the web page? Yeah, but it's fun to ask people Can in the van. Now? Can hear you now. Oh, so, okay, so I thought it was somebody online. You're right. We're at 278 meters. 1,200. I mean, 1,278. They have it on there. And I don't think you got to introduce yourself. Can you tell like yes, everyone please. who you are? Yeah, of course. So, hi everyone. My name is Paola Santiago. I am from Puerto Rico, and I am um, this expedition science intern. So right now, I am in the data logging position. Kind of a cool view of ripples on the seafloor. So you think of, you see ripples kind of in shallow water, but they happen in deep water too because the currents are moving the little bits of sediment across the seafloor. They pile up in these little hills and fall down the, the backside. And over time, we'd see those ripples move if we could sit here for, I don't know how long, <laughs> a week, a month. Should we just camp out here? Uh, no. <laughs> Good to keep moving? Yeah, keep on trucking. Bridge nav. Three zero meters, two zero zero, please. Trucking. Let you get a little closer to the ship. Who should get closer? Me? Huh? Me? Uh, Adelanda. Oh. We'll swing. Not gonna tell you where to go. You usually do. <laughs> <laughs> Ship moves getting started. Can we zoom in on that sediment there, the like the coarser stuff? All right. Yeah, what is that, Adam? Zoom in, Dave. Zoom, uh, it's not stick of something. Uh, yeah, so, huh. Yeah, it looks like little bits of uh, iron manganese crust, but sometimes it, in you know, other places, it can be organic matter that's uh, kind of settled down. You see it a lot in the Atlantic with the, uh, what's that, sargassum that survives as it kind of falls all the way to the seafloor. Wow. When we were in Puerto Rico, uh, we saw this cool isopod that grabs on to sargassum and you scare it off the seafloor it takes it with it flies away with these little it has little paddles on the oh end of its arm yeah what's that hermit crab that picks up urchins and puts it on its back hmm and it'll throw it if it's if it's frightened <laughs> <laughs> 
decorator crabs. Is that yes. all the zoom we got? Those. Yeah, I think that, oh wow, Ooh. look at that, Ooh. even more. Falls in. It looks, looks rusty. Yeah. Do you want a sample here? Oh no, I don't think so. It's inorganic. That's good enough to know. All right. Carrying on. Adam, you mentioned it's not organic? No, I think it's bits of rock. Okay. Coarser bits of rock. an umbalula? Umbalula, it's a type of sea Can pen. zoom in, Dave? Yes, please. That's perfect. Yeah, okay. Ooh. Is that, that, that a sea pen? Yeah, that's a sea pen. Cool. Let's try to figure out what it is. Um, could be protoptilidae. Paolo, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's um, protoptilum. I concur, again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, could you go to the coral behind it in the background? Yeah. Uh, oh, that, is that oh. a little octocoral thing? No, that is, yeah, that's, it's a C pen. I believe that's Ambalula. Hey, zoom in, Dave. Yep. Oh, I see. Wow, that's pretty. Wow, that's gorgeous. Yeah, right. I love these ones. It's like they're all polyp. All polyp all the time. It's actually wearing a tiny t-shirt that says that. <laughs> Ship move complete. Ship move, I. You can carry on. Carrying on. Bridge, nav. Three zero meters, two zero zero, please. Annie, can you remind me how you say hi in Samoan again? Um, talofa. Talofa. Yeah. Talofa. 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 <laughs> Welcome to our viewers tuning in. Talofa. 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 <laughs> I don't want. I don't want our viewers thinking I'm saying something else. Uh, <laughs> Annie, how did you join the Nautilus? Um. Uh, so I, I got an email um, from um, Belle. She works for the uh, National, National Marine Samoa. Sanctuary of American Samoa, 200. and she reached out to me, um, and and said um, if I would like to apply. And so I applied. I almost missed <laughs> the deadline, <laughs> but I made it. Um, I'm super grateful to be here. Um, uh, based on our, my conversation with um, Megan uh, during the forum, I'm, I'm the first Samoan to be accepted into the program, so it's 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 an honor. So a lot of people back home are are tuning in and excited to follow along um, Nautilus journey. Yeah, that's amazing. Congratulations! I'm very happy to have you here. Thank you.
So it's the middle of the night in Massachusetts, right where right. I'm from. What time is it in Samoa? Well, we're about an hour behind. Okay. So, so not far off. Not far off. So okay. It's about 7.55 in Pongo Pongo. For me, this feels like 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to everybody who's just tuning in. Um, EV Nautilus is about, correct me, um, 200 miles off Kingman Reef. Um, we've just launched our first dive today. Um, ROV Hercules is currently exploring an unnamed, we are currently exploring an unnamed Gio. If you have any questions, um, please send them in. Thank you for tuning in. Who is that to Adam, what's a GEO? GEO is a flat-topped seamount. So it's fully submerged, but at one time it uh, breached the ocean surface. So it was an island at, at one point, and wave action eroded the island. And then as the crust it was on cooled and subsided it sank beneath the surface of the waves so what we see as the flat top of it now was once up at the ocean surface very cool and this kind of cool what we see now is you know uh this kind of the dark big rocks are the kind of in place rocks of the seamount and then the the darker kind of peppery salt and pepper areas are are little bits of those bigger rocks upslope that are working their way downslope flowing downhill and collecting in these areas and over time if they stay in this spot they'll kind of become solid rock again as these iron and manganese crusts kind of grow out from each of those points because this crust only grows on hard surfaces and make a kind of pavement. So I wouldn't be surprised if further down the slope we see uh, kind of looking almost like a black parking lot of, of mm -hmm. crust. So would you see that further from the geo? Uh, like on the abyssal seafloor away from the... Like where would that pavement form? Would you see it like closer or further from the geo? Well, it really needs a hard sediment-free surface for the for the crust to form. So yeah. it's generally going to be on things that are sticking up out of the seafloor because things okay. that are flat on the seafloor will uh, get covered with sediment and it doesn't really grow on the sediment. Okay. So like other geological features that are already already exist in the area. Yeah, okay. and and when in other parts of the ocean, these crusts form uh, to make nodules on the seafloor, and they generally start on a little hard bit, oftentimes a, a fish tooth or something like that. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, yeah, and then they'll just keep growing, and uh, and and over time come the size of a, a softball or a grapefruit. Uh, and, and like cannonballs all, all across the seafloor. Pearls of the deep sea. Pearls of the deep Pearls sea. The, deep the sea. black pearl. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> so is it just floating around until it finds a hard surface? Uh, yeah, you could kind of say that. Okay. Um, it's essentially, well, it happens very slowly. So if it grows at a rate of like half a millimeter up to five millimeters per million years. Right. Wow. Uh, so it's very, very slow. And uh, it's kind of always in the water. And when it finds the surface, it, it actually, it may be a microbially mediated process as well. Uh, really? To, yeah, the deposition. Good to move, Robert. Bridge, Nav. Grab it. Roger. 
Three zero meters, two zero zero, please. Moving unless notified otherwise. Science other than rocks, do we have any other sampling goals for the rest of this dive? Uh, well, we tried some push cores before. Those were unsuccessful. I think we will we wouldn't have any luck with them now as we get onto this slope. We're not going to have that much sediment accumulation, so it's a no on the push cores. And then always uh, potentially interesting biology. Do but we have water samples from this dive? Hmm, good question. Did we collect any water? Um, I didn't see that on the objectives that we needed to collect. I can so we typically want to collect water over dense aggregations of okay. corals and sponges, but we haven't really encountered any kind of yeah. high-density colonies yet. Yeah, it'll be getting steeper as we get down to waypoint three. So I guess the answer is if we see anything cool. There's an anemone off in the distance. Oh, it looks like one Niskin was triggered for just to test that it worked. Okay. Coming up to speed on the ship move. Uh, skin water sample from a low bio area. I don't know if this would count huh? as that. I think we probably already have that in the bag, yeah. Awesome. Annie, who's the most famous person from American Samoa? Oh my gosh. Sorry to interrupt, but can you zoom in on that <laughs> small gelatinous looking thing by the by the laser? Oh, I didn't even see that. Right on top of that rock? Yep. Oh, you're on mute, Robert. Do you see it? Dave, way? can you zoom in? <laughs> hmm. Huh. Hmm. Uh -huh. <laughs> huh. Huh. <laughs> huh. Bridge now. Is it a holotherian? Yeah. Um, it does look like a holotherian. It looks like a holotherian. Hold position. Sea pig. You Slash like it? You want to take it home? Um, that, it probably wouldn't survive slurping, huh? You know, I think I'll let it be. Okay. <laughs> you live <laughs> another day, sea pig. <laughs> That's good, thank you. Oh, to answer your question, mm. um, are you talking about off the island or on island? Ooh. Because everybody knows this famous person. Okay, tell me the f Mo most. Moana vibes. Who? Moana vibes. Moana vibes. I don't, know that. I don't know that it's person. A, it's, it's, it's Dwayne. Or what? Oh. oh. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, is he from Samoa? Yeah, or? he's Samoa. Yeah. Cool. Yep. I didn't know that. I'm thinking of <coughs> getting him to play me in my <laughs> biopic someday. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna play you, Samantha? <laughs> no. Just think about it. I don't know. You guys can crowdsource that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Paula, most famous person from Puerto Rico? <laughs> from Puerto Rico. I think she I would say the same as Annie. Like, born in the island or on the States? Like a Puerto Rican from the States? Let's just say it's Bad Bunny. I don't even think we need to, de I don't even think yeah. we need to debate it. We have Bad Bunny. <laughs> <An> urchin. <laughs> oh, cool. There's an urchin there in that little hole. Are we looking at it? Yeah. 
Oh, why not? Zoom in, Dave. Yes, please. Dude, that is a great spot. That urchin <laughs> got like his own little apartment there. It's posted up. Hey. Nice. I'm not really great with urchin ID. Does it look like though. some of its spines are wider than the others? Or are those right. just... It does oh, look like... Yeah, it does. Good. Paddles. Yeah. Before, Lula said, I think it's a pencil urchin. And that sounded really authoritative, so... <laughs> it did look like this one as well. Adam, do you think it might be similar to this one? Hmm. Okay, good. It has more spines. Though, more spines, there. yeah, and a more pinky interior. That's very true. <coughs> TJ, most famous Irish person? <laughs> <laughs> Who do I pick from? We're all famous. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's TJ. Uh, <laughs> it's TJ. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, musicians, you have U2. Oh, yeah, Bono. Shane McGowan, the Pogues. Yeah, there's, a, there's a big list there. Don't even know where to start. What about the cranberries? Are they? Dolores Reardon, yeah. One of my favorites. Seconds. I'll just have to get her back in zoom here. Adam, what uh, audio panel are you on? I'm not telling. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you trying to cut me off? Uh, I don't know. What? How do I? Uh, it should, I there should be a little sticker on the on the right on the left. Psi R. Psi R. So. Paolo, what um, what audio station are you at? I am at Data. You're at Data. Okay. Yep. You're really quiet for me, so I didn't know if it was. I'm alive. <laughs> just going back to your question there, Dave. Uh, um, just came to my mind. I think uh, Shackle uh, Tom Crean, one of uh, Shackleton's right-hand men. Oh, uh, since good we're answer. In the field of exploration here. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting those he talking points ready, TJ. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> he was uh, from a village right beside me. Uh, Is that a village coral of Bonus Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, right. West of Dingle. Lower left. Oh yeah, yeah. pen. Oh, yeah. Uh, pen of two more. Paula, are you on the, uh, the uh, data? Logger panels? Yes, she is. Okay, yep. Because that wasn't working earlier and we were not using it. So. Oh. But it sounds like it is working. Can you speak again for me? I want to get the level right. Yeah, of course. One, two, three. Can you hear me? Zoom yeah. in, Dave. Ooh, look yeah, at that, that thing. Much better. This looks like Thank a primnoa to yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> so, Juliana, are the. Uh, this. Uh, brittle star in here. Mm -hmm. Are there organisms that specialize in being associates with different coral species? Um, I am actually not sure, but when it comes to brittle stars, you can find them on a lot of corals in the deep sea. Mm -hmm. um, when I was annotating deep sea footage um, in a lab a year or two back, uh, I basically just put plexorid, I uh, know, not plexorid, um, Brittle star associate with every plexorid I saw because they were just on all of them. Mm -hmm. um, Brian was saying earlier that um, they believe that it's either a commensalist or mutualist relationship between the the brittle star and the coral. Got a really wide base. Is this a primnoid? Yeah, it's this thick at the bottom. Yeah. Paula, what do you think? It looks like it, yeah. I'm also <laughs> looking under the guide. Brian's Brian? chiming in. Brian's yes, primnoid. Prim All right, I'm cool. All right. I'm good, thank you. We have a question from the viewer. There seems to be a lack of shrimp in this area, um, as there were earlier. How deep do the shrimp go? I thought they would be at all depths. It's true. It's shrimp all the way to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hypothesis. 
<laughs> I've seen shrimp. I've seen shrimp at you know six thousand meters. So I I don't think they are particularly uh, well. At least at these depths, I don't think they're they're super impacted. But they're mm -hmm. the they're mobile, so they're probably going where the food is. Yeah. Right. Do we have any biologists in the room? Uh, <coughs> <laughs> 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 change no. Your voice? I'm going to agree with Adam on this one. 